So when you're working with lasers, one of the things that you really want to get comfortable with is what the settings are that you need to run your, uh, your laser at for your different materials. So the recommendation is typically every time you start working with a new material that you sacrifice one to running tests. And typically running those tests involves test cards. So if you see these here, we've got an engrave card, which is your fill engrave, and we've got a cut card. And what this does is for a given power setting and a given speed setting, um, and same with the engrave, it allows me to see what the expected, what the expected output is of my laser. So and it's going to vary from material to material. This happens to be birch plywood, but you would do the same whether you're working with uh, wood or leather or acrylic or paper stock and any other materials that are supported by your laser. You will always want to sacrifice one to generate these material cards and you'll start building up a library of these um, for all your different materials that you use on a regular basis. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to jump in to make it and I'm going to show you how to configure these. We'll, we'll take the stock material test array settings that they have. We'll do a little bit of tweaking to it to get it, the output to what I want it to look like. And we'll take a look at creating each of these cards and then uh, we'll come back and wrap up after that. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to make a square. And I'm just going to go five by five to save space. And then I'll take this square and go up to the array button and choose material testing array. So material testing array it allows me to set a min and max on the power and speed settings. So in this case, I want to do, uh, I'm going to do an eight by eight grid. So that gives me eight samples by eight samples or 64, you know, individual settings. And you can see in the background. And I want to go 10 to 100, which is fine on power. And then speed, I'm going to go, let's see, do I want to go 100, 600? Let's go 100 to 500. Yeah, that should be fair. Okay. So, and actually, if I wanted to do that, I could do 10 rows and... Let's see, I'm trying to get an even. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. So that gives me an even 50 jump. Nah, I don't need that high. We'll just, we'll stick with that. Okay. So that gives me a base test array and I'm going to modify this a little bit. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to ungroup this and I don't care about these little lines on the outside. So I'm just going to click on them and delete. And then my test array, I'm going to drop that down to size five and I'm going to change that to say, um, we create, we create vision 40 watt uh, birch ply. Actually, so then let's make that four. Okay. So that's just saying what I'm going to be testing. We'll bring these down to five, bring that to five. I'm just going to go through and modify all of these texts just to be a little smaller since I'm doing a small grid or a small square. I don't want it to blow up my positioning of everything. And I do wish that we create would let me bulk update text. Like if I grab all these texts, I would really like the ability to bulk change the size, but that's all right for now. I'll just keep doing it by hand. And actually these I want before. So let's drag that out a little bit, drag that over, and then I'm going to grab all these and do an alignment. Uh, 
bottom align just to make sure they're aligned and then distribute horizontally and then adjust accordingly so I'm just I'm clicking on it and using the arrow key to kind of drag it over to where it looks about where I want it okay good and then same thing with this we'll align right and let's just bring these down okay that looks good bring that up tight that up tight all right and then last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a box around that and we're going to make that box a cut give it some cut parameters that work for me that I know work for birch ply and there you go so there's a, a fill and grave test grid um, so now if you click on each of these you can see that this should be 500 speed 10 power so if I look over here 500 speed 10 power uh, if I look here, it'll be 61 and 233. If I look here, it'll be 100 and 100. Um, and actually, I don't want that one to... Uh, I think 100 and 100 is too much. Let me look at one of my previous tests. Um, no, 100 and 100 should be okay. It's going to get me almost all the way through, uh, but it should be good. Uh, all right. So that should do it, and then I just want to center that up. Let's make that a little bigger just for the sake of argument. And there we go. Make this a nice round number. We'll make it 90 wide and 105 tall, just because of my OCD. And... Uh, Let's do that. So I'm going to save this, and I'm actually going to overwrite my previous one. Good. Now let's refresh the machine. And I'm going to bring this off over here, do an autofocus. And I think we're good. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's send it. All right, so let's do the same thing again, but this time we're going to do it as a cut test. So let's follow the same steps that we did before. I'm going to do the same five millimeter square and then array material testing array we'll do eight by eight okay and now because we're doing cut tests we don't want 600 millimeters per second that's way too fast uh, so I know for my uh, this is I'm doing birch ply three millimeter and I know from my machine just from experience that I'm going to do a low end of two and a high end of 16 and that should be able to cover most of my usable uh, speeds that will cut through this material um, somewhere in the 10 to 100 power range. So let's see what that does for us. Okay, let me hide the background. All right, so it looks largely the same as before. Now the difference is, let me ungroup this again, and I'm going to do the same thing, get rid of some of these nonsense bits here okay so the big difference is I want these blue squares here I want to highlight all of those so I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag and grab all of those and I'm gonna come over here to the right side and where they're currently set to fill and grave I'm gonna change that to a cut and by doing that it's gonna default and move it over to this uh, this particular red layer it seems like anytime you do a cut in make it it forces it to this red layer you can use all of these other layers for fill in graves and line engraves but whatever reason this is the only layer that allows you to do a cut um, but so you'll see as I go through here um, 10 power 16 speed if I come here it's gonna be uh, 10 power 49 speed 
um, etc etc so it set up my material array as a cut with all of the speeds and powers that I set um, so I'm gonna do the same thing as I'm gonna, as I did before I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna resize all this stuff Okay, and then we'll do the same box on the outside. I should be able to do 90 by 90 for this one and move that to a cut layer, set that as a 100% power of 12 millimeters per second for my laser. We'll center that is our... Um, okay, looks about right. All right. So that should be all we need there, and uh, let's do a refresh, and we will focus, okay, let's actually move this up a little bit so I can save some material, hmm, hmm. let's go right there so that it in theory, cuts out that little bad spot there. Uh, all right, there we go. Let's send it. Okay, so now we've seen how to make these. And um, like I said, you know, definitely take some time every time a new material comes by and create a pair of these. And that way, every job that you do from that point forward will largely um, be successful because you'll know the material settings that you want to use. Now we create does offer a point and click material setting uh, with a small five by five grid. Um, that's okay to get started with. Um, but I do find that a five by five doesn't quite give you enough options to work with. And I also find that a lot of their settings, um, I have to bump up a little bit on the power compared to what they say to kind of get the output that I want, but that's just to my taste. Uh, the point and click settings may work perfect for you. Uh, so just know that those are there. You can go and you can select your material, your base material, you can select the thickness and they will provide you some recommended settings that you can just click on one of these squares and it'll apply those settings within the software. Um, but if you want to get a little bit more control over it, you can apply these manually at your speed and power settings. These were all done at 100 lines per inch. Um, you can also, you know, mess around with the LPI setting and get darker, denser engravings, uh, you know, and create different cards if you really want to get that granular. So hopefully that helped you guys. So if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, subscribe, like the video, um, hit the little bell notification icon so you get updated anytime that I release new content. I will probably be spending quite a bit of time with the We Create um, and Make It software in, uh, in the coming series of videos. Um, you know, I'll take you through the basics of what are the different, uh, you know, engraving processing types. Uh, how do I work with layers? How do I do some basic design work in, in Make It? Um, how do I bring in external artwork um, and, and modify it so that I can control, you know, send it off to the laser. How do I use the design studio to pull, you know, pre-configured designs and, and tweak them to your machine. So I'll kind of go through a lot of that stuff and we'll walk through, make it together. So definitely stick around and, um, you know, let's, uh, let's take this journey together. So until next time, guys, we'll see you later.